Maria. Welcome to this episode of Dad Bod After Dark. How are you guys doing? Woo, great. Thank you awesome. for having me. This is I'm wonderful. Jake. I'm Eric. Are you drinking I'm, eggnog? I, I was just going to ask, <laughs> what are you drinking? Is that a milkshake? Yeah. It's eggnog. He likes, he likes to get his bedtime milkshake. Cools him. Keeps him once chill. It, once I get done with this, I got 15 minutes tops before I'm out. So. <laughs> Good. And, uh, and, special, and I'm special Jeff, Jeff from the... From the great state of Texas. Happy to be here. How you doing, Jeff? I'm great, thank you. What was that look, Eric? I was just Did I lose the you great, state great state of Texas. Of Texas? I was kind of, all right, I'd like to know more. Yeah. It's a great place. We don't pay any income tax. Uh, we're going to secede any decade now. It's, it's going to be wonderful. We're going to do it this time. The first one worked really out doing it. pretty well for a few years. Right? It's the only state, right? Six flags of Texas. Texas has been part of six nations. There's been six flags that have flown over Texas, yeah. So, yeah. Some longer so. than others, right? You, you know who's ahead of Texas in the whole secession movement is California, where you're sitting right now, Eric. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so where I live is basically west-west Texas. In California. <laughs> is that what Bakersfield is? <laughs> it is. It's oil fields and agriculture and uh, MAGA everywhere. Except for East Bakersfield. Exactly. They're, yeah. They're East there. Bakersfield is, is where all the hippies go and all the I wouldn't call them hippies, but they're, they're not MAGA. Um, okay. Yeah, this county's fairly conservative. If if California was ever like we're breaking off and taking half the counties in California would just say no we're we're staying, um, you know there's not many people in these counties but they wouldn't stick around with California. Well, there have I also mean, been ballot measures to turn California into several smaller states. Yeah, three states and four states. You've got Jefferson up, up north. There was a ballot measure two years ago to turn. Um, to, that they they put the ballot measure was that they would consider putting California putting a, a, another measure on there to split it into five states. There's like Northern California, Southern California, um, California, Central California, and then crafty uh, Silicon Valley. And so the names need to be worked on. You need to. They, they, I agree. Names. Yeah, so it's not great. Yeah, it, it really wasn't. But um, the state of state of Sequoia. I mean, it, that no would have been there. like Central California would have been Sequoia. <clears throat> if you're going to go like Northern California, they could have gone with Jefferson since that's been their idea for a while. Mm-hmm. Never happened. Slave owner, new name. Yeah, I I no, now, the, no. the Jeffersons from <laughs> from TV. George and Wheezy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know what you were talking about. So, so it's not Jefferson, up. it's Jefferson's. Yeah, yeah Jefferson's. Jefferson's. The state of Jefferson. I'm from, I'm from Jefferson's on the West Coast. All right. Yeah. Yeah, they need work, and I don't think it'll happen. But okay, it's fun to hope. Well, here's the thing. I think, I think that should be a solution for a lot of these larger states is because they're so different, right? Like New York City is so different from upstate New York. Yeah. So just split it. And Texas, do you really got? Do you guys really like Amarillo? Like, are you big fans of? No, see, I, there you go. No, if it's gone, so, it's okay. Yeah. So there well, and there's go. some states that are just bigger. I mean, if you notice, most of the states west of the Mississippi are basically the same size and the same shape. They're mm-hmm. rectangular. They're roughly the same size, but then you get some outliers, and California yeah. is definitely one of them. And I don't know the special situation that led to that, but there definitely was one because states were designed to be a certain size, not necessarily was a it, certain shape, but. Was it the Mexican-American war? When we, I, I, when we I don't know the answer. From them? I, I think maybe, uh, I mean. Parts of California, yes. Huh. Uh, parts of California, Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Nevada. Yeah. And then there's like the UP in Michigan. Like Michigan doesn't want them. 
Wisconsin doesn't really want them, so just let them be their yeah, own Fox state. News thought they were what, part of Canada? <laughs> they thought they were part of Canada, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a map. <laughs> yeah. How did Wisconsin lose the UP? Did they really not want I'll it? I mean, I'll tell you how. It was actually a border war between Michigan and Ohio and okay. either late 1700s or early 1800s. And it was like a blood. Li- it was a blood. Well, here's how they solved the war is because they were fighting over the border between Michigan and Ohio. And they were both claiming that strip of land there because they wanted to have access to the lakes. Um, Ohio wanted access and Michigan didn't want to give it to them. So then, so then basically the United States stepped in and said, all right, well, we'll give Michigan the upper peninsula, even though it's not touching you and Ohio, you can move your border North like 30 or 40 miles. And then Wisconsin, you get this one tiny Island as compensation for the entire peninsula. And that's how they figured it out. There's a whole thing, but the Island Wisconsin got, it's lovely. You should go there in the summer. There's no traffic. Does it have uh, a name? Washington Island. No, oh, there you go. Yeah. Is, is it big? No. <laughs> no, it's like, uh, it's uh, it would be a great setting for a Jason movie. Very small, very remote. So the it, only it way- was a throw-in prize. They, they got awarded yeah. something that it's really nice. wanted. Yeah, it's nice, but... You're not like, there's no industry that you're ever going to be able to build there other than the ferry industry to and from the mainland. Fishing. Fishing, yeah. So there you go. That's how Michigan got the UP. All right. there. right. I've always wondered because it does not make sense. It makes no sense. Yeah. I know. You know, and maybe it's from our perspective, but Wisconsin with the UP in addition to it would look very weird. I like it would look like a man with a very fancy hat. (laughs) Yeah, I like Wisconsin's shape (laughs) as it's I like it too. (laughs) It's the the hand with the little green bay. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah, it's like when I mentioned Texas seceding to Jake, his big objection was (laughs) the shape of the United States is going to be jacked. You can't do that. That's yeah, it's it's too weird. Maps and t shirts, and it's a whole thing. And well, yeah. and to get across the country, you're going to have to drive out of the U.S. and then back into it. Unless Texas leaves Amarillo with the U.S., just gives it to Oklahoma. Yeah, because the 40 straight across. runs right through there. Texas has its own power grid, so I think we need to keep Amarillo. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. I don't want to start making demands, but I think that's the way it's going to work. Can you primary we're, we're not. We're not <laughs> There's primary- windmill farms up there. There's there there's it's there are reasons. Yeah. No, I know those windmill farms are crazy. You know, every time we drive back uh, to visit my family in Wisconsin or my wife's family in Pennsylvania, we almost always go through the Panhandle and then Oklahoma. And those windmill farms are just they're growing like gangbusters out there. It's unbelievable. I guess I just never expected windmills to become a legit power source no and not only that i mean they're they're building solar farms in texas that are starting to rival what's popped up in the desert out there in arizona so a lot of a lot of renewable energy there's a big solar farm north of the 10 i it's across it's in california right there's a big one out there in the desert which covers square miles but there's several of them there's they're they're amazing All right. Good talk. Yeah. I love it when we drive to California and you have to drive through that, that pass. Outside kind of, of Palm like Desert. Cal- yeah. And it's like the wind. I mean, it's a good, great location for those, those windmills, but man, it's like, I hate driving through that because you're fighting the wind for an hour trying to stay on the road. Yeah. Maybe that's uh, just me. One um, December, my wife and I were driving back to California from Phoenix and from about the time we crossed the border at Blythe until Palm Desert, it was uh, like 50 feet of visibility with the dust. 
that whole distance. And then once we crossed those mountains past those windmills, it was gone. It was like an hour and a half, two hours of dust. Um, it's wild. Probably the windmill's fault. Yeah. Well, they, they, tur- they started, it up. <laughs> they turned them up and they were blowing the dust at us. <laughs> It was dust and feathers and beaks and bird yeah, parts. It's everywhere. And, yeah. <laughs> so our bird population is just now recovering three years later. Man, if it did pigeons only, I wouldn't care at all. Like, <laughs> if they pigeons could find a way, to, seagulls. Go yeah, for if it. they could find a way to get a windmill to specifically kill pigeons and seagulls, <laughs> I would say there's no limit to the the funding. Let's it's all in the shape of the blade. All. It's all in the yeah. shape of the blade. Is what I understand. Just the garbage birds. You just got to make the windmill look like the roof of my house and they will flock to it. <laughs> is that what it takes? Yeah. Freaking hate pigeons. All right. Sorry. I'm going to go off on a thing here. So. No, that's, that's uh, fine. So well, I, oh, you got some? I think we're going to say the same thing. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I did want to ask Jeff. Um, since we have you on, uh, something that you're involved in, and we can get into some of the other stuff uh, later. But uh, tell us about Ambux. Unless I'm pronouncing that wrong, because um, I've only seen it spelled. No, you, you said it right. Um, Ambux, it's a nationwide organization started in the 20s. Um, the, uh, the branch out here in Longview, Texas started in, I want to say, 1984. I got invited to uh, to an Ambux function by a friend of mine and went out there and just sat in on lunch and um, signed up to be a member to really take advantage of the networking. And the more I, I hung around, I really uh, started to like the organization. It's, it's run very lean. Uh, all the membership does all the work in terms of, you know, managing the organization and the, the books and uh, meetings and the board and all that. There's no, there's no compensation for anybody. So all the money we raise goes straight to our mission. Um, our mission really broadly speaking is, uh, people with mobility issues. Mm -hmm. Um, we tackle that in our chapter in three ways. Um, the, the Longview chapter of Ambux invented what is called the Amtrak. And the Amtrak is this modular bike that we've built for, primarily for children with disabilities who are unable to ride a normal bike. So depending on what the, the specific issues are for a certain child, the bike can be uh, customized. If you know the child only has use of arms and no legs, then maybe we'll have a hand pedal on there. Um, some of the bikes just have a, a handle on the back that someone's going along with the kid and pushing them around. But anyhow, the, the Amtrak got invented by Longview Ambucks and now it's something that they distribute nationwide. Uh, we have a, a manufacturer who makes them for us. And um, that's one of our main things that we give away. But anyhow, so that was invented in Longview. The Longview chapter is very proud of that. Uh, so anyhow, we give away a lot of trikes. Another thing we do is we give out a lot of scholarships to the local community. Uh, those scholarships are occupational therapy, physical therapy, and speech therapy. We work with two of the local colleges, Kilgore College and Panola College. And last year, I think we gave out 36 scholarships. Um, last year, when we were giving away scholarships, there was no COVID issues. So we had a whole big thing and um, all the recipients came and there wasn't a dry eye in the house. It was really nice. I mean, I've, uh, I, I was supposed to be on the, uh, the scholarship selection committee this year. And I was sitting there reading the applications and I read most of them. And I just, I said, I, I can't do this. I can't pick somebody not to get you, the scholarship you would have approved so, every single one of them yeah and it's not we didn't have that kind of money and or we would have lessened the scholarship so i said i i'm just not the right guy to do this i'm sorry you guys old have rubber stamp jeff peterson right <laughs> just yes yeah, exactly yes 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 yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, you get bro? a scholarship you get a scholarship oh. So yeah, we give away a lot of scholarships. Um, they're great. These, you know, they're, they're need-based. These kids all fill out great applications and they come in and they get them. Um, I was in a board meeting recently and these women came in to ask for some of our assistance in setting up this new physical therapy um, facility that they were putting together in their community. And we didn't really have a bucket of money to give to them from. So our, uh, 
our chairman at the time said, well, if we do this, it's probably going to come out of the scholarship fund. So we would have to reduce the scholarship fund to do that. And uh, this lady teared up and she said, you know what, I, I got the scholarship from you guys for two years and I never would have been able to make it through school if I didn't have that scholarship. So in all honesty, if you guys would have to reduce the scholarships, then I'll go find the money somewhere else. I, I don't have the heart to have you do that. So that's awesome. Anyhow, that was really touching. And then the last thing we do is we build ramps in the community. And those ramps are either for uh, disabled veterans, elderly people, uh, kids who have mobility issues. Sometimes they've you know been in an accident. There's one kid who dove into a shallow pool and broke his neck and anyhow he's in a wheelchair now amazingly he's been told to expect a full recovery so apparently uh paralysis science has come a long way recently That's but awesome. uh but yeah so we build these ramps and they're really nice and they're really sturdy and uh they look good and um man these guys have this ramp building down to an art we can get out there we're going out saturday to build a ramp we'll have a 30 foot ramp built in three hours that would carry 50 people on it. You could have everybody in the neighborhood standing on this ramp. It's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, that, that's really what we do. Uh, my favorite thing about Ambucks is that everything we do directly affects our local community. Um, there are so many needs in every community and we don't handle all of them, but the stuff that we do is it's needed. Um, those trikes are they're awesome. You know, we give one to these kids. They They come to one of our meetings and they ride it around the room and you know, these, there's special needs and they're just, they're screaming. They're so happy to ride this bike around. And so these kids, they'll, they'll ride the bike for years and then they'll outgrow it. They'll give the old bike back and we'll refurbish it and hand it out again. But um, there's probably a hundred members in the Longview Ambux chapter and um, everybody's helping out in whatever their way is. And it's really great. So it's a, uh, it's a great organization. And like I said, it's nationwide. Um, I don't know if there's any in your communities and, uh, phoenix or utah or california but um in the event you're ever looking for something to be a part of it's really great yeah it's cool it's nice when you when we see you post um the ramp building and it's like you said you get it done in a day but it's also like a lot of times it's local kids that are helping out do it and it's not just you know it's not just like you and, and your friends but you get a lot of it seems like a lot of community support and uh seeing yeah, like, like one night cool one night i was over at a friend's house and uh we're having dinner it was friday night mm -hmm. and um there were two teenagers at the table i know both these kids kellen and jamar and i said hey i'm waking up tomorrow morning at seven o'clock to go build a ramp do you guys want to go which basically to them is like hey do you want to wake up earlier than you want and burn a saturday to go help some people that you don't know yeah and, they both jumped in and did it and got out there. And, but yeah, there'll be kids from, uh, th there's an Ambucks club at Longview high school and those kids have to come out and help on a certain number of ramp builds and helping out mm -hmm. on a ramp build looks good on a scholarship application. So yeah, there's always lots of help. Um, I've had, my kids have gone out and helped out before it's, it's really great. But I mean, if you go out and do just one ramp a year, you're going to feel great. And because these people that you're building the ramp for, you know, at the end of the day, they come out and they've been getting a wheelchair down some garbage steps out of a single wide trailer. And it's impossible. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's impossible for just the person in the wheelchair. So mm -hmm. it's them in the chair, it's someone behind them, it's someone in front of them. And they've been doing this, you know, however many times a day for years. And now they've got a ramp where they can just roll down and roll up. And um, anyhow, it makes a big difference to them. And uh, they're, almost always super thankful they're bringing us water ordering pizzas out crying and giving hugs so it's uh, awesome. it's super rewarding in a in a very selfish way but i mean clearly it's not a selfish endeavor but it's uh it's it's a great thing that's awesome so it's an odd question why do so many places need ramps well, in rural East Texas, uh, there are all sorts of living structures, and a lot of them are single wide trailers. Um, okay. Most of the time when you get a single wide trailer put in, there's some pretty steep two or three stairs going up into it, which are fine for somebody able bodied. But as soon as you throw a, uh, a walker or a wheelchair into it, you basically have to pick that person and or the wheelchair up at the same time. So usually when we're building the ramp, once in a while, it's on a house. 
that has some steps, but it's, I mean, the simple answer is you just get somebody who can't navigate steps anymore and they've got steps on their house and they can either get a new house or we can put in a ramp for them. And, um, you know, these ramps, they're all need based. They don't pay for the ramp and it's, it's a good deal for the people who live there. So. Well, I think, I, I mean, that is, it's awesome. And it's awesome to see the, the stories that you share and, uh, you know, it's funny how something as simple as a ramp or a trike can change someone's life for the better, which is such a cool, I mean, it's, it's just such a cool thing to, to have that effect on, on someone's life in such well, yeah, a positive and just, way. It, and just in terms of community service, I mean, you know, it's, it's such a small part of the need in just my community is mobility issues. I mean, we're not dealing with... Mm -hmm with hunger, we're not dealing with abuse, we're not dealing with kids who are sick. I mean, there's a hundred other things, right? Mm -hmm. And there's there's a lot of organizations in my community and I, we see them all, all the time, we interact with them. Sometimes we do uh, fundraising events with them where we'll, you know, we'll split up the funds that we raise, but um, just doing service in your own community, I, I, it's, I, I can't tell you how great it is. Um, you're improving your community. You're helping out people who really need the help. And, you know, I'm not a huge fan of leftist sayings, but, you know, it takes a village and it takes a, a lot of hands to do this stuff. And if you're going to, if you're going to do mm -hmm. it locally, it, uh, it helps out a lot. It's good. It's a big cringe, Eric. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> oh, I'm okay. So Jake, there are, there are none of these ambucks in Utah. I'm still moving. I mean, no, I know. I, okay. I'm just saying they're not there. In fact, I don't Thanks think there's. Thanks for the update, but I the, think the, I don't think there's any. The paperwork is signed. Like, there's no charitable organizations in Utah, from my cursory research on the Ambucks webpage. So, okay. There's one. I think the Mormon Church handles everything. <clears throat> yeah. Everything. They've probably got their own fiat currency yeah. too. I'm fine with that. They could pull it off. So, yeah. All that Pepsi um, money. Yeah. That, all that big Pepsi money. So, all right. Well, I think it's something. You said there's one two hours from you? Yeah, it's Eric? down in Santa Clarita. There's, it's uh, trikes. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah. But it's it's a way. I was thinking it might be a good service project for your students. Yeah, uh, pedal Something pushers like in Santa Clarita. They do Amtrak's, but you know uh, Santa Clarita is basically where Six Flags is here, so it's forty five minutes away. So here's a fun fact about Longview Ambucks: is the chapter that I'm in is it's an all men's group, and women come as speakers and I, maybe even a woman could join, not that she would, but um, apparently it started out, it was a full on co-ed deal and all the, uh, the wives, they all split off. I think there was some division in there and they're like, <laughs> look, you guys do what you want to do. We're doing our own thing. We're not doing this anymore. So all the women split and started Ambucks too, which is just down the road and they, they do their own stuff. And like, they've got all this whole Santa land thing going on right now with Christmas lights and um, so anyhow, they're separate but equal, of course, but they they basically left. <laughs> like, you guys have fun with your little club. We're going to go yeah. start our own. It's not like as much women and men. Like it was husbands and wives. Like there was yeah. a serious, a serious division there. Like all the wives, like they they cut out across the desert. And it's not like it was our bowling league or something like this is like a charitable organization, but. I don't know what happened, but I'll ask some of those old guys about it and they'll just like stare into the distance. And we don't talk like, about that time. Yeah. <laughs> looks like the, there was a great schism. The 1990s was a rough era for Ambucks and Longview. That's awesome. all of our wives left us at once. <laughs> you all got divorced? No, no, they just started their own rival Ambucks club. That's awesome. All right. I mean, there, there's nothing quite like overlaying, you know, uh, 
oh, Sons of Anarchy plot lines onto charitable organizations. So this is, but it literally is like a, it's like a real life example of anything you can do, I can do better. Is what it sounds like. The schism. Yeah. Or I don't want to do what you want to do. So yeah, I'm tired of being mansplained about the trike again. We're leaving. No, I understand what an angle is, dear. I get it. Okay. No, I know you can't have too steep of a grade. Thank you. So that's awesome. So, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention our big fundraiser this year. So usually what we do is we have a thing called the mobility bash and it's this big party and we get together and there's all these, uh, donated food and drinks and raffle items and all that stuff. And, uh, it's called a drawdown. So everybody who goes in has a number and all the numbers are up on the screen and through the night numbers come off the screen and whoever has the last number on the screen gets $10,000 and it's a, Jeez. it's a significant prize. Yeah. But we can't, hold that event this year because of COVID. So what we're doing instead is um, actually a rotary club in Greenville. Um, I have some friends out there and they do this thing called the super raffle. So uh, they helped us to set up our own super raffle. So what this is, is for a hundred dollars, you get one super raffle ticket. And every Thursday of 2021, we will have a drawing for $500. And we won't sell more than a thousand tickets. So they're numbered zero to nine, nine, nine. Um, so you don't really have just an entry. You have a number. So theoretically a number can, I mean, not theoretically a number can win more than one time. So that's how we're doing our major fundraising this year. So Eric, I'm going to expect you to put up a graphic uh, where people can go to, to get a super raffle ticket. And that's going to be longviewambucks.com slash raffle tickets. Uh, like I said, tickets are $100 each, drawing every week for $500. Um, if you buy the ticket online, I will mail it to you with a uh, signed thank you letter from yours truly. And uh, the money all goes to help the Ambux mission and zero overhead. There's the graphic. That's okay. We can do better than that. <laughs> I, did I get it right? Longviewambux.com slash raffle tickets. Correct. Longviewambux.com slash raffle tickets. Yeah. Nailed that's it. it. 100 bucks. So, anyhow, 1,000 tickets. Yeah, 100 bucks each. Uh, yeah. The You're more gonna... tickets you buy, the more chances you have to win. My quick that's math. And of course, every ticket goes to help out. So, you're going to raise $100,000 there. Go on. And now back out the prize money. Keep going. 500 bucks a week. 52. Yeah. Minus, so twenty six thousand dollars, seventy four grand. That's right. There's a few other little overhead expenses. So basically, yeah, basically it's seventy five grand. So that would go to fund all of our scholarships, a lot of trikes. No, oh, Bill and uh, Joe told us. me they were covering the uh, overhead costs. So Bill and Joe, they've got it. Bill and Joe. There's got to be a Bill and Joe in that group. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's a Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Bill runs auto body shop. He's awesome. He's funny. He's always getting kicked off Facebook. He's uh, wildly entertaining. Um, yeah, there's probably six Joes. Yeah. All right. See, we're safe. They got, they got the overhead right. covered. That's you awesome. Cost yeah, of the ping pong balls. Old 1960 man names that it worked. <laughs> the ping pong yeah. balls. You know, actually what we do is the Texas pick three. They do a pick three drawing four times a day, six days a week. Does that shock anybody else? That blew my mind. So anyhow, our <laughs> winning like, number seems will like be a bit from, much. Yeah, it does. It's overkill, right? I mean, <laughs> and there's a 30 like, other what, ways to gamble like, down what's at the, the convenience I store. I mean, by doing it that much, I mean, what's the pot? Like $36? I mean, they're, they're not really <laughs> grow. It seems... I, I haven't looked into it that much, but I do know that the Thursday drawing at 1230 PM, that's where we pick our winning numbers. So when somebody gets a ticket, um, it's got your, your numbers stamped on the ticket. So in the event, somebody wanted to get in and see, now, of course, we'll send out an email to everybody and um, every week with the information about the winner, but, but that's how we select the number. So no okay. ping pong balls involved, no, no shenanigans. We, we got all that off our plate and above board. 
somebody else is responsible for it. It's probably against the law. I don't know, but I think we're okay. You got Dominion coming in to work your machines? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a whole other episode, right? Yeah. Dominion, QAnon, let's, let's dig it all up. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's really get into the weeds. Let's go from a honorable charity into unhinged conspiracy. Just sharp, sharp turn on that. It is exciting. Uh, it's, it's a wild time to be alive. You know, when, what is it? The Irish blessing or the Irish saying, may you live in interesting times. Now that we live in interesting times, I get that it wasn't really a blessing. They were, it was more of a curse. Like interesting times <laughs> kind of suck. So I kind of wish it was a boring time right now. I've had enough of interesting. Uh, this, this wonderful past modern year. age we live in is yeah. causing problems. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. So, all right. Well, thanks Jeff for that. Um, I mean, I guess we could end the show cause that's probably the best part of the show we're going to have now um, with, oh. with that. But do you want to, but I, I want to keep going on, but I don't think we're going we to just on. have random discussion from here on out. And whenever yes. you decide Dad is the most after appropriate dark. place to, no, 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 I'm not saying we should cut this off. I'm just saying we're not going to top that. So we've already, we've already hit Everest with Ambux. Now it's just a, a reckless descent. back. Yeah. To the hey, so can, can, yeah. can, can you guys talk a little bit about where you went on your road trip? Cause I've listened to the episodes and I didn't really get a good idea where you started, where you went, what you we did. I mean, started in Bakersfield and we drove to Phoenix. So the, the, the whole thing was that I was driving to Phoenix to pick up my parents, um, tent trailer because they were giving me their tent trailer so i was gonna drive back and then my dad was gonna drive back with me but for the first leg of the trip my wife said well i'd like you to you know you should have someone ride with you i'm like who's gonna ride with you? i'll be fine and then i had the idea so i texted jake i said tickets are really cheap i'll fly out to bakersfield we'll drive back and we'll just record stuff so we stopped at Fort Tejon, which is uh, just south of Bakersfield in the mountains. And I walked around. It was an old dragoon camp. Uh, prior, it shut down prior to the Civil War, but it's where the, uh, the dragoons, U.S. dragoons, would uh, they um, kind of do uh, deployments from there and, you know, protect the valley and just keep everyone in line because a road – what is now I-5 was a road. It was a major road in California. So they had to protect it. So that's when then, we stopped. And then we later stopped at a Wendy's. That's true. <laughs> and uh, With no uh, historical significance. Yeah, but it was a good Wendy's. I mean, it, was it was windy. Nice. Yeah, very it windy. It was really windy. So um, here's a fun thing about the road trip is uh, Eric and I have done a few road trips in our day and right. I have always had to do the lion's share of driving That's and uh, one time so when I moved to Arizona in 2008 uh, Eric flew up to Wisconsin and he drove back with me and by drove back I mean he sat in the passenger seat the whole drive from Wisconsin to Arizona except there we go for about we go. one hour in Nebraska because he didn't know how to drive a stick. And what? so I taught I taught him how to Still drive don't. stick in in Nebraska. And I said, all right, can you just drive, like take this leg and like, so I can take a nap. And he goes, yeah, yeah, that, that's fine. And then he wakes me up like less than an hour later. He's like, I can't do this, man. I got to pull over. <laughs> and I'm like, it's a straight road for 300 miles. Like you don't have to do Yeah, I've driven thing. through Nebraska. You could have put a... Uh... <laughs> A locking device on its steering wheel, and you both could have slept. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, okay. To be fair, it was uh, there was construction on that road, so it was very stop yeah, and that, go. You don't have to shift. There was a lot road. of shifting, yeah. which was th uh, that was the problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So it was fun. You know, this for reminds me. me of of when I was teaching my son, who you both know, to drive yeah. a stick and had him out in the walmart parking lot and going through the whole thing and the whiplash and the tires and the body damage and the yelling and the whole mm -hmm. 
<laughs> the, the, the whole episode. And he's starting to get it. And as soon as we called the quits for that night and went back, took him home. And a few days later, he's in my car and he's looking over. He's watching me drive. He goes, Where, where's the clutch and all that stuff? I go, oh, I, I don't have that on, on this car. He's like, what? Like they make cars without all that? <laughs> Why do we have that car? Dad! <laughs> and he's like, I, I'm never learning that again. I, I don't need to know that. I just won't buy that kind of car. Okay. I can't argue with that. You win. Yeah. That's awesome. I remember, uh, gosh, when I was a, a kid, my dad had a, a big, beautiful Ford F-150. It had like the dual gas tanks and, and the big flatbed. It was like a 1992 or three. And um, one day they were having some people over for the house at the house and, you know, having a cookout and like a small gathering. And so I was just kind of bored because there's no kids. So I went into his truck and I was just kind of playing around and I accidentally disengaged the clutch. <laughs> it started rolling out of the back of our driveway across the street towards our neighbor's house. Our neighbor runs out and like gets in, stops the car. And, uh, and, uh, like, and I was like nine or 10, I wasn't old, very old. And, uh, anyway, goes, gets my dad and my dad's not pleased. Um, but didn't get, he didn't yell at me really that much. And, but I ran upstairs and like hid in my room the rest of the day. Um, and then later that year, my dad, this is now it's winter time. My dad, same truck. He goes, Hey, can you go turn on the turn on the truck and and put the put it in neutral and put the the stick in neutral and i said which stick and he goes hey you know what never mind i'll just <laughs> i'll do it myself <laughs> so suffice it to say he did not trust me with his vehicle probably no yeah so. sounds like you made the right decision yeah i mean i he was wanted shocked to... he was gonna have you go do yeah. that in the first place well, like this isn't gonna end well he thought one of the perks of having a kid is he wouldn't have to go warm his car up anymore and do all that other stuff, but he couldn't even well, trust he didn't have me to get his simplest. own beer anymore, right? Yeah, well, no, that's true. And I was really good at mowing the lawn and shoveling. So, um, and when you but, were a child, there's a chance that there you didn't have a remote control. I mean, I, I was the remote control. Do you guys remember being the remote control? Yep. Yeah, yep, yep. seven Had, uh, channels and what UHF and VHF, the two knobs, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, the VHF yeah, a, would go click, 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 and UHF would go. Brrr. Yeah, and you had to be That's like where a Fox wizard. Was. Yeah, and then you'd be like, <laughs> and then uh, as he's as he's telling you to like change it, he's like, "All right, turn it." And then you turn it. He's like, "No, you're doing it wrong." I'm like, "I don't know how else to do it." <laughs> what do you mean I'm doing it wrong, Dad? <laughs> it turns. There's left a knob. Right. Like it goes in circles. <laughs> I went from two to four. What do you want? Yeah. Gosh. Man. And you know what? Another thing about growing up as a kid is my dad had HBO and I thought that was the pinnacle of television entertainment. Is it not? And the enter well, it still <laughs> is really up there, but like HBO was, that was like the premium thing. And now it's just one of many streaming packages that you can have. Like everybody's got a streaming network. NBC has one now. Like, so there's no, the allure of HBO wasn't quite the same as it was in the mid. No, in HBO when I was a kid, they had Wimbledon, they had this uh, this Gary Coleman movie where he was twelve years old yet somehow lived on his own in the subway in his own subway car and shined shoes. Yeah. And then Beastmaster. Do we all remember <laughs> Beastmaster? Yeah. With the ferret. the ferret. Yes, yeah. the ferret that would bite bad guys under the, yeah. yeah. As Nora far as the animal was familiar, though, I, I feel like you could have gotten a better one. But no, yeah, the ferret was cool. Yeah, I, I started watching that the other day and something came up right. I couldn't finish it, but I must have seen Beastmaster 50 times because HBO showed six movies for two years. And that was yeah. one of them. Yeah, no, I, I think I saw Weekend at Bernie's 142 times over the course of my middle school. Because and it of, just you know, keeps getting funnier every yeah. single time. And well, and like my dad, he liked watching like the Larry Sanders show was on back then. Um, and what was, what was the other one? There was another one of those kind of 
Bill Maher, I think he got his start on HBO and John. Politically uh, incorrect, yeah. Yeah, politically incorrect. And John Stewart did, uh, I think he might have had a show on HBO too. So like, and there's a lot of comedy specials on there. And that's what well, I remember and, watching HBO a lot. And arguably the Sopranos changed television. So before the Sopranos, like mm -hmm. th there were people who did TV and there were people who did movies and never the two shall meet. If you did TV, you were less of an, an able yeah. actor than somebody who did movies but then they started getting high quality writers and production and great stuff and the sopranos change it and look at where we are now with yeah everything that you get in all these streaming services i mean it, it's nothing to see a brad pitt or a dicaprio doing a, a tv show or a series you had your jason bateman's all that and mm -hmm. i think the sopranos started that so yeah well done definitely. hbo well in hbo they were kind of the first one to to push the envelope on what was acceptable to watch on TV because they didn't have to listen to the FCC, right? So they could they could get, you know, the violence and the swearing and the, the sexual content and all that stuff. And that was kind of part of their draw and, and everybody kind of copied them, you know, in some, to some lesser extent. Uh, but yeah, HBO, man. I think we HBO all figured is, out a way to stay up past 2 a.m to see yeah. what's going on on hbo after 2 a.m yeah <laughs> and, 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 yeah. And, and it was not worth it but it no. was fascinating but and here's another thing speaking of staying up past 2 a.m when we were kids is literally the networks would just shut down after like the 10 o'clock news <laughs> They're like all right we're gonna play the pledge of the allegiance watching the flag fly or the star spangled banner in the flag and then everybody go to bed and it would just be static until six in the morning yeah. Like that was, that was TV not that long ago. Yeah. And, and you remember cartoons were like after school and early morning Saturday and that was it. You yeah. better get your fill of Thundercats, GI Joe and whatever else. Cause yeah. Yeah. Six, <laughs> to, uh, six to nine, cartoon. six to 10. But after that, it was yeah. into oh, college football. I don't want to watch that dad. It's your turn. The love boat. Yeah. Who knows what was on? Yeah. It was terrible. <laughs> yeah, I remember. So now they have a new Animaniac series on uh, yeah. Hulu. Hulu. And, um, you know, we started kind of watching that with our kids. But I remember coming home, even I must have been junior high, even into high school, coming home, grabbing a sleeve of Oreos and a glass of milk, <laughs> four o'clock, <laughs> Animaniacs, just me and that sleeve of Oreos. And whoo. Yeah, and now you've graduated to double stuff and a pint of eggnog and you're jumping on a podcast. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> the, the more we change, the more we stay the same. That's uh yeah. I just, that's awesome. I, so I, we ordered eggnog. So we do a lot of the grocery. You don't delivery. need to justify it. Like, <laughs> no, no, let him tell the story. I want to know what's in the mug. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we do like Walmart delivery or pickup. And uh, we, I ordered eggnog and I said, I need some eggnog and I need a bottle of Southern Comfort. And uh, we get the order and there's a, a and it's just know, Southern Comfort, 750 of Southern Comfort. And, and, and they didn't have the eggnog I asked for. So they gave me like a pint of eggnog. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not going to cut a strong it. Drink. <laughs> so the ratio is way off yeah. <laughs> so i i take the southern comfort and i go to put it up above the you know where we have all the liquor and i look up and there's a bottle of southern comfort same exact bottle but like has this much less southern comfort in. i'm like i didn't need another bottle that's all i used last year mm -hmm. and then i got more eggnog so because that pint was not gonna cut it so, so now you're making up for lost time yeah 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 is there a name for this beverage? It's just eggnog, right? Eric, no, are you drink. putting Southern Comfort in the eggnog? Yeah. That's where I thought this was. Yeah. Good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, what do you call it. that drink? Eggnog. But no, it's, egg it's not eggnog. <laughs> Is, does it have a you name? You got to call it like a, you got to call it like a barnyard or a. a yeah. A, Sounds good. Cinnamon Barn. twister. Yeah, there we think, go. Yeah. Is it? I think it's just eggnog. It's just eggnog, and everyone's like, "Well, no, 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 it's clearly spiked. You can't give this to one of your. You can give eggnog to one of your children. You can't give them. You don't pour Jack Daniels into a Coke and then just still call it Coke. 
Like it's not only rum and you know it's a whiskey and coke. It's like, like a scog. Can, can we well, go with scog? Egg scog? Soco eggnog. Scog nog. Scog nog. Okay, it's a scog nog. <laughs> scog nog. Because I I just found name the name for it. Scog-nog. It's called Soco eggnog. That's kind of a lame. No, name. I like scog nog. Scog nog. <laughs> Is that what you said? Sounds like <laughs> yeah, yes. scog nog. It's he didn't hear you say it. He came up with it on his own. That's basically what just happened. It sounds like something a bunch of Vikings would drink. Skog nog, right? Like God, yeah, skull pafiskin. Skog nog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oof, <duh. laughs> oh sure. I got all this southern comfort from last year, eh? And look at yeah. all the it only brought me only brought me this much eggnog. What am so, I gonna yeah. do with that? Oh sure. Yeah. Uh it's also all known as Eggnog is also known as milk punch or egg milk punch. Yeah, no, we I still don't like the name. sound of it's that. Skognog. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to see. Comes from noggin. Oh, those are the wooden mugs to sell to serve alcohol in. Okay. Uh, come can, comes out of England though. Looks like. How much actual egg and or nog is in eggnog? And what's the ratio? <laughs> Have you ever had no. just straight nog? Well, I've had, I know there's people that have made eggnog and I've had the eggnog and it's, it's good. It's fine. You know, it's like the homemade recipe where they've taken eggs like right there in front of you. And, but I'm sorry, just buying the carton where it's pre-made. It's just so much better. So much better. It's never occurred to me to make my own eggnog or to put lighter fluid in it and somehow make a cordial out of it. <laughs> I mean, it's... Yes, eggnog's great, what? but uh, I'm way too sober to drink this. So, Silk makes a soy milk version. <laughs> which oh, is... no. <laughs> no. So... <sighs> How can you do that? The uh, One of the charms of eggnog is that it's 74% fat content. Like, you can't... Well, it still has, <laughs> it still has the egg yolk in it, it's I think. Tw- <laughs> it's 1,200 <laughs> calories per eight ounces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like that's a that's a staying power kind of energy. You want to keep that. You don't want to. You don't want to replace that with soy or almonds. That's what all those. That's what all those Iron Man yeah. competitors are drinking out there. They're they're loading up on eggnog. They're hitting the nog hard. Very yeah. calorie dense <laughs> beverage. No way. Keto friendly. What have you found now? So apparently, in eighteen. Uh, <laughs> So apparently, you know, uh, the army apparently has drinking problems. Mm. Um, so does the navy. I can tell you from <laughs> yeah, I know this. So apparently, there was an eggnog riot at West Point. Uh, the egg on the twenty, <laughs> yes, the twenty third through twenty fifth of December, eighteen twenty six. Um, alcohol is obviously prohibited at the academy. Um. And that can lead to expulsion. So, you know, they thought drinking was starting to get out of hand in 1826. Uh, So they were informed that due to that alcohol prohibition, the Christmas eggnog would be alcohol free. So the cadets smuggled liquor into the academy. Gallons of whiskey were brought in. Uh, And then there was a drunken free for all, go figure. Um, and one cadet tried to shoot a commanding officer. Uh, 20 cadets oh. were court-martialed. Jefferson Davis and Robert E. Lee were both in attendance at the time. Neither was found guilty. No kidding. The hmm. eggnog riot. You literally Very learn history. something on every Dad Bod History podcast, don't you? Yeah. There you go. Well, that's So I'm funny. trying to think back to previous podcasts where I'm like, riding around on my tractor and listening to you guys. And there are times where I am yelling at my phone and all of those times escape me right now. But um, I, I would love to be able to, to go back to, I should take notes on stuff that I vehemently dis. And oddly enough, it's usually Jake. Jake gets in there with his quasi lefty stuff. And I just, I start yelling. Well, and, we're very yeah. disarming in the moment, which is probably what's going on. You just let yeah. your guard down and we just disarmed you and 
just in such good company Look, to argue with us about. Yeah, no, or we're I'm, just not talking politics. I mean, we well, we, we touch okay lightly it. on MMT, but we're, we're all pretty open minded to what's going on there. But there's been some. Uh, I, I was definitely at the uh, when you guys were picking. God, what was the one where you guys were assigning sports bar figures to money or oh, something? Yeah. No, not bar, but bar fight was awesome. Currency. Refacing our currency. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of yelling during that one. A lot of that was at Cameron. I'm like, Tommy Lasorda, pick Tommy Lasorda. And he never yeah. did. So yeah. He was very yeah, California awesome. heavy on those, yeah. but yeah. So is that there a, a person? I'm just that... saying I I I, I, I want to come back when there's something that, that we can get silly about. So Okay, who do you, who would you put on the uh let's take Jackson off the twenty. Who do you put on it? Martin Luther King. His dad? Not to- or Junior. <laughs> Martin Luther King <laughs> Senior. He's got a great story, first of all. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Martin Luther King Jr. Okay. I think I went. I love I love Harriet. nonviolent change. That guy, he uh he was uh he was a strong Christian. He wasn't a perfect man, but he uh yeah, he he changed the world that he lived in for the better. So yeah. Yeah, I think he's one of those gimme kind of like if we were to ever reface our currency, he would be one of those top of the pick kind of guys to go on one of the bills for sure. You know that uh, his name originally was not Martin Luther King. Both he and his father were Michael King and he was Michael King Jr. And uh, so from what I understand, um, his father took him on a trip to Germany um, along with this whole Baptist group that they were with and all these ministers and they went and they were touring Germany and they came across all the stuff on Martin Luther and the Protestant Reformation. So when they got back, he legally changed his and his son's name from Michael to Martin Luther. Based on that trip? Well, that dog really oh. like that story. Uh, there's, there's, I think there's coyotes outside. She's going to go outside and howl now, but That's good. she's almost out. It's almost over. I He's think. a nerd. Martin Luther King Sr. is still, no, sorry, he died in 1984. He's born in 1899. Holy man. Anyway, I didn't know that. I didn't know that he had changed his name. Yeah. But now if it was a sports figure, I mean, now that's a whole nother direction, right? Okay, so mm-hmm. that's your serious pick. Who's your, like, here's who I want to slap on the bill because it'd be great. I'd just enjoy it. Jeffrey Lebowski. I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> I knew it. Can it be anybody, anybody? Fictional character? Does it have to uh, be somebody from history? I, I could be fiction. They just have to be an American could citizen. You do, could you have, like, the 10 be the dude and then... The 20 be Mr. Lebowski, <laughs> since they're two different characters. Yeah, no, it's got to be something like that, right? I, I yeah. think the dude is going to end up on some rarely used coin denomination, like some $2 coin or something that legally exists, but we never see. And Like and, a half penny. And, like you have to <laughs> yeah. buy it for $30 from the mint <laughs> in four from, payments. Fr- from the Franklin Mint. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, yeah, you you could use it in a machine to buy a Coke. Soon they'll be and sending it comes us with a plate. <laughs> they'll be sending us commemorative tin Lebowski's. You know, like uh, like when you watch the TV and they they're they're always trying to sell us Morgan silver dollars. You know, you can buy all these Morgan silver dollars for like thirty bucks. They'll be selling us you know Lebowski tin quarters or something like that. Instead. Okay, so, so since we're going down this road, here's something out of nowhere. Can we? I, I love America, right? And Eric, I know you Big love fan. America because because you've got your okay. flag, right? You're making definitive statements now. <laughs> yeah, Jake, now, where's your flag? I love Czechoslovakia. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. 
there's okay. clearly stuff that the rest of the world is just killing us at. Like dollar bills. We don't need dollar bills. Like Canada's killing us. They've got the dollar coin and the two dollar coin, the loony and the toony. Yeah. Dollar bills, yeah, I, they come apart. The, like, I, like yeah, I, th- I think paper money. I don't even know if it's it's the the cost. The thing is just coins make more sense. And as we've devalued our money over time, which happens with interest, right? With happens with inflation, the dollar doesn't need a paper denomination. Yes, yeah, I agree. Do we need pennies? Do, no. We could even get rid of nickels probably, right? Let's mm-hmm. just round it all to 10 cents. We could, you know, I mean, I you know that, that there's a, uh, what is, what is the, there's a denomination less than a penny. It's well, uh, a half penny if you're in England, but I don't think uh, in the United States we have one, do we? No, there, there, it, I learn it by teaching math. It's um, oh, a mill, a mill. Yes, M-I-L? it's a mill and it's the one tenth of a penny, right? You see it on gas stations. Yeah. So that's called a mill. So we already use a one thousandth of a dollar in transactions um but it's always rounded up when we're dealing with cash or with anybody who who's not running a massive financial conglomerate um so you could just say sorry we're not using pennies so the smallest denomination we'll use is a is a dime other outside Mm -hmm. of that it rounds up or down yeah that's better because First of all, it costs three cents to make a penny. Then you got to haul the things all around and trucks. And I mean, if you see a penny on the ground, you're probably not even going to pick it up. That's how little it's worth. Yeah. But I'm sure whoever is a lobbyist for whatever state they're making pennies in is the reason we're still making all that copper. It's Arizona. I think that I don't think there's copper in a penny anymore. There's copper. Well, it's copper coated, but it's I think it's primarily zinc. Hey, listen, if you want to uh, drive all those copper thieves out of business, you stop making the penny. You drive the demand for copper down. I don't think copper thieves are making pennies out of their stolen <laughs> copper. So I like where your okay, head's but, at, but, but, but here's there's something. almost no way that's going to impact the, the price copper, of copper. I, I, the copper I've thieves seen, do not understand how to make uh, fake money. They're not very good at the, the fake no, money. No, but game. it's the value of copper. So there's people who will buy bags of pennies on eBay. And then they'll take those pennies, dump them out, and search for all the ones pre-whatever year that they stopped using copper. And they'll pull those out, and they'll be like, this copper that I have in my hand is worth three times the how much I paid for the bag. So if a penny is made before 1982, it's 95% copper. Right. If it's 1983 or later, it's 97% zinc. And and how much does a penny weigh? Mm, uh, Two and a half grams. So what's a copper value per gram? I I don't know. I'm not a copper thief. I don't... (laughs) You're at, you should be happy. I got, I had the grams ready to go. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was smooth. Yeah. He asked me that third question. He knew I wasn't ready for the third question. So one okay, gram, the, the, one gram of copper is worth three fourths of a cent. And you said a penny is two and a half grams. Well, a zinc penny is two and a half oh. grams. Copper pennies were three grams. So So a copper penny is worth almost two and a half cents. So if you get enough copper pennies, I'm just. Anyways, we could probably stop using the penny. You can't bail out now. Whole... Keep going, man. <laughs> it's a whole you say other... we're going to get rid of the nickel. Get enough penny. copper pennies, we can smelt them down and yeah, make I mean, our own copper bars. Is that what you're implying? So then we need to get a blast pennies, furnace. Apparently, we need zinc, which is far less expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why you got to get the old pennies. Anyways, we okay, just so don't the next need thing it. that America is failing <laughs> on, why aren't we on the metric system? What What's going on? Because I don't you know. know what actually, we're trying to convert this. everyone I was a kid. back. Yeah, we're going to English. We're, we're using the King's measurements now. No, I, I actually read an article about this, and I believe it was right after the Revolutionary War. Jefferson is either Jefferson or Madison. Mm-hmm wanted to bring a guy over from France to 
to bring the metric system. And he had like an official kilogram and an official um, Gosh. meter. Jefferson you know, was weights and was weights such and like a, Never mind. He a just Franco really file. loved the, everything he loved about the French. Hey, okay. Sorry. Before I'm we just, get into that, they're, they're not but, wrong about so, everything. Like, so he brought. He was trying to bring it over, literally, and then the ship. It sh the ship got waylaid by pirates. Pirates took the ship that the guy that was bringing the metric stuff over to America to like. So pirates used the, the metric, metric system. system. <laughs> no, <laughs> they did after they, that. They, they did stole after that, the metric system. Ah, is... <laughs> it's way better. Look at me. Sold meter. it to the English, and then. So that's that's why we don't have metric is because when we tried to bring it over, pirates stole it from us. Like that's God's problem right also, there, keeping us from the devil's when I ways. Was a kid, yeah. <laughs> at some time in the late seventies and early eighties, there was this big push, and we were going to switch to the metric system. And they started putting up the road sign would say distance to Phoenix forty eight miles and also sixty seven kilometers. And there were Mm -hmm. two it was on all and then that just kind of evaporated i don't know what happened it went away we're like ah this is too hard would have been a but 77 thing, not, and this is maybe the most american thing ever is that we're like <laughs> we still everything like you now you have to have standard wrenches and you have to have metric wrenches so you have to have both sets of everything because you don't know what you're bringing into the house that you like if you're if you want to change the oil in your car or do some minor Handy work that's not an IKEA bookshelf. Like you have to have both sets. Yeah, socket of, wrenches, Allen wrenches, they all yeah. come in, yeah, standard and metric. Metric. It's just ridiculous. But that's we're like, well, we don't want to change to metric, but we're gonna think, build a bunch of stuff in metric and make you buy tools to use it. I like, think Eric, a, how many feet are in a mile without looking? Five thousand two hundred eighty. Why do you know that? I mean, I know that too. This is so esoteric. Like, okay, how many feet are in a chain? A chain? I don't know. Those other ones are a furlong, a marpet. There you go. Arpent. 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 Well, what is it? are all units of measurement. Yeah. No, I know. I'm still hanging on to a stone. Yeah. Pounds. A skosh. I like okay, it. Okay, because... but, but here's something because we use the pound, which is a measurement of weight. Uh, the metric system doesn't use a measurement of weight, it uses a measurement of mass, right? Kilograms. Yeah. So the only difference would be you're going to have the same mass on the moon as what you will on the earth, but a different weight. Right? Well, I don't see why that's a problem because nobody's going to the moon right now. So uh, we had this discussion. I know we did. We were working had our space on this discussion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Space Force coming back. It's happening. Oh, well, Elon Musk is going to create his own special Martian measurement system. Dweeb. So That guy's he'll, amazing. He'll probably go metric. It's amazing honestly. dweeb. <laughs> he will go metric. Isn't he like from South Africa? I Maybe. don't know. Might be from Mars. Huh? He's he trying to get be. home. Yeah. <laughs> Got and then the last thing, the last thing we should really change, can we just go to a 24-hour clock? Why do we have to have seven o'clock twice a day? That's dumb. I don't know. You gotta change I can see clocks. Eric processing. I can literally see you doing a pro con analysis I, it, in your head. I will say this. I mean, if I you're remember, talking about an analog clock, the difficulty is gonna be everything's half the size. So it's just gonna be, again, nobody uses okay. an analog clock to be really precise. Thank you. So thank you for it's like it's roughly three or four o'clock, can't really tell. Well, no. It, it, or we can just go to there's, no. It's just better seeing. Hey, we're going to be there at nineteen hundred. Here's the thing. Well, there's a, I have a couple of thoughts. One, this is also a lot of what we're discussing is Eric going back to his what he thought was really advanced timekeeping system, but is actually super primitive. In that, when is the beginning of the day? Sun up. You know, when's the end of the day? Sundown. Yeah. That's how we tell time by looking at the sun. Was Eric and, raised on a farm? No. No. He's, He's raised by a pilot, super mechanical and like precise, and <laughs> in the middle Eric's of the city. Like, no, we're going to measure things in stones and, and thumb size and feet size. He really wanted the old my son, uh, my son clock watch, you know, with the little dial. Yeah, Just I got to hold on. I got a sundial in your yard. <laughs> no, don't tell me what your fancy clock says. 
God's telling me right now, <laughs> Apollo's got the time. I've got so. the time. It's the sun. Yeah. So you had some really <laughs> revolutionary ideas on timekeeping. Yeah. Well, we were discussing but, daylight saving time. And I got to a point where I was saying, well, why not, instead of having one day where the clock changes by one hour, do it over the course of a month, 15 minutes every week. You know, all our clocks, all our phones can, all our, all our didn't phones watch can that handle episode it. Yet. So uh, all our phones can handle it. But For three minutes a day. And then I got to the point where I'm like, why not just have all our phones and clocks all electronically and, and handled over the internet? Just be like, well, today the sun rises at this time. So that's six o'clock. And I'm like, just go with when the sun rises. And then it, it, I went from where we are to super advanced back to really primitive. Yeah. I, I, I horseshoed that one. Yeah. It was a so where do we stand? What, what do you guys think? Thumbs up or thumbs down on the 24 hour clock? I'm not against it. I think it's fine. But I will tell you this when I first like could set my digital Casio or Seiko watch <clears throat> between like regular standard time and military time. And I set it to military time because so I'm like, yeah, military time. That's cool. And That's all the tough. girls are like, which is oh, more like military. Yeah. Time. <laughs> weird. I didn't get a lot of dates. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> I think I did it because like, I like the idea of being associated with the military, but I didn't want to go through the actual work of like boot camp and, you know, sacrifice and, hard, and, so. and yeah. learning all the times. So, <laughs> yeah. So, but no, I think we could go to the 24 hour clock. I don't see why not. It's just, I don't know, just uh, on face value. I mean, I know it's a change for everybody, but it's a pretty easy one and it's clearly better. Then you got to yeah. figure out like 12 o'clock. Is it a.m., p.m.? I don't know. It's a whole thing. Yeah, there's just one 12 o'clock. There's zero and there's 12. That's better. Yeah. I agree. So I, I think that's all of my old man get off my lawn stuff that I have. Other I than that, America is beautiful. I love America. So coins, metric, and clocks. But you're willing to secede from it. Well, or are you that, forcing another episode? Or are you forcing the rest of America to secede from America? I don't and know. Texas no, I, be I, the new uh, seat of government. I, th th this is a whole other episode. This is. This is. <laughs> I think that can be a something to start and an an hour and a half into this one. So, and I don't have a Texas flag. I'm gonna have to get one, a little one. So. Oh, mm -hmm. just the big one. Oh yeah, I've got a yeah, like a fifteen foot one hanging up in the shop. So, and there's one on the front of the house. Yeah, that's good. So have it's you, good to know it's being in ahead. Texas, or even before. Have you been to the Alamo? Of course. You know what I love about the Alamo is when you walk Go into on. the main. Um, I guess it's the chapel built one of the main rooms and they have all the flags representing every person who's at the Alamo and where they were originally from. That's gotta be one of the most awe inspiring parts of that entire place is to see the origins of all these people who fought to defend their home, their new home, Texas. their adopted home. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you got the, like a German flag and an Irish flag, uh, you know, Florida and, Maine and or all these other well not Maine but all these other states these people came from and all the the streamers for each person right so like North Carolina had five guys or whatever so there's five streamers there on that flag I just think that's kind of neat the uh the first time I ever saw the Alamo was in Pee Wee's Big Adventure yes because, as you know his bike was at in the basement of the Alamo or so he thought and the Alamo that they went to in the movie is not the real Alamo. It's like some other Alamo replica. And they went to it and it was out in this field and it was out in the middle of nowhere. I just thought that that was the Alamo having never been myself. And then I go to see the actual Alamo in San Antonio. It's like it's in the middle of downtown San Antonio. There's yeah. skyscrapers and <clears throat> rivers and restaurants there. And, and I've been there twice. And I didn't realize it the first time I went, but the second time I went, if you're across the street from the Alamo walking along, there's like the, uh, all the weird kind of shops and not shops, but like there's the, uh, well, it's the, got, like, the river walk is right over there. 
Yeah. Well, across the street, there's like Ripley's, believe it or not. There's some other like places you can go in and pay for little experiences. But along that sidewalk, there's like a brass like strip down the sidewalk. And that brass strip is the outer wall of the Alamo when it was originally fought over. Where it originally stood. And because what's standing now is like the mission and the barracks, but the whole Alamo is this larger structure that had a wall around it that no longer exists. So I don't know, you kind of go to it and you're like, this is small. It's like, yeah, it was a lot bigger. So you have to take into account all these other um, kind of areas, the, the outer wall and everything. Texas history is pretty cool. The whole revolution, San Jacinto, the Alamo, all that. It's super interesting. One of my favorite museums in the world is uh, the, the Texas History Museum in Austin. It's outstanding. Well, we're going to have to come visit right here. Yeah, you guys need to road trip it out to Austin or let's get some Southwest tickets and uh, go down there. That's no, it's gotta be serious a road trip. content. <laughs> it's got to be a road trip. Gotta be. Okay. I guess I could... nothing excites me more than driving through New Mexico to get to Texas. We can take the northern route. Yeah, yeah. What we'll do is we'll fly up to you guys. I'll drop my wife and kids off with your wife and kids, <laughs> and you and I'll road trip from Salt Lake to yeah. Longview, Texas. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get real creative on how I pitch that to my wife that. You're she just going to come to and dump your on the family podcast. off with her while we get to leave. <laughs> she we might have to workshop that. Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> if she's going to listen to this. You know, I can tell you right now, I talked to her and she said no. So <laughs> right now she is giving me a look that's like. She's off camera happening. right now. Yeah. Letting yeah. you know this does not work. Shut you know, it we're down, watching Jake. it together. Shut it down. Right now. And she's telling me, no, it's not happening. So if we could put together a fundraiser and get some airplane tickets from. We'll come out and build places. a ramp. Okay. Well, okay. Just we'll watch. Willing if, to let us come, but we'll watch people. Well, then here's the other thing: is, I mean, I'm talking about getting you to Austin, and the Alamo is clearly in San Antonio. So we just need to get you I to mean, Texas. Let's just same get to state. Texas. We can start driving. Yeah. Same state. They're pretty close together, right? It goes on forever. Yeah, it's like yeah, I know. from San Diego to the northern part of California. It is, it is significant. Yeah, I, I remember well, driving across the Panhandle and just, it takes forever. It's, uh, I'm going to get this wrong, but like from Texarkana to El Paso, is further than it is from Texarkana to Chicago or something like that. I mean, it it just Texas keeps going Arcana? and going. Where is that? Yeah, the Texas Arkansas border. It's at the oh, Texas Arkansas is. border, so it's way east. You're gonna oh, fact yeah. check me and bust me right now. Yeah. No, that I mean that looks. I think I remember you... accurate or very close. It's significant. The sun's come up, the sun is set, and we ain't out of Texas yet. That's how that goes. So you're near from California to Texas, like like you're just knocking down states. You're Arizona, New Mexico, and then you get to El Paso, and like woo, Texas, and then for the next three days, you're still in Texas. (laughs) Yeah, but if you're on the East Coast, it still takes forever. That's just because you're in traffic. Yeah, there's more people. Ugh, gross. All right. Oh, Austin's okay, not so too far Texas from San Antonio. No, it's not bad. No. New Braunfels is between you. That's where... Uh, okay, but... Isn't that where... Uh, what's that water park? Schlitterbahn. Schlitterbahn. Oh, my gosh. That's a <laughs> heck of a lot of fun. Oh, we can yeah. go to Schlitterbahn. We can go to Schlitterbahn. They've got uh, go-karts down there. There's a lot to do. You get up like into the play. hill country around Austin. There's all these old German communities up there. There's great German food. <laughs> I feel like oh, that place does sound really pretty shut down, down right pastries. now, but it's it's really cool. Yeah. I, I say right. we set a long term goal to all get to Austin. Let's just okay. let's bring Cameron too. It's kind of yeah. We're gonna need yeah. to give him Flugerville. We have to give him like wow. He's what? gonna need what like three years notice. Yeah, so tell him now and got a town twenty twenty three. Yeah, right. Flugerville. Yeah, we'll get him out there. 
How far is that? It looks like a bit of a drive. Okay, let's not. Okay, we're just planning a road trip right now. So let's. Yeah, he's on travel this episode. <laughs> yeah. Let's... I got tickets. We're booked. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Jeff, thanks for coming on, man. It was awesome talking to you. And uh, we'll have to do it again sometime. Yep. I love the podcast. I don't know how much of this was usable, but uh, it's been a lot well, of fun. I don't, well, I don't awesome. Eric's, Eric's editing style is quite limited, so <laughs> he ain't cutting any. Yeah. Unless yeah. I absolutely yeah. screwed something up, it's in. And I didn't. Yeah, I don't think so. we had any F-bombs or real errors in judgment. I think we're okay here. <laughs> yeah, no, it'll this will be so. good. Um, I'll just text me that, text me that web address for, uh, the inbox and let me drop that in there. I, I don't know if it worked, uh, when I checked on it, but we'll get that figured out. I'll put a nice link on there so people can click on it and all that good stuff. I've seen you superimpose Harriet Tubman and Vince Scully in a fist fight. So I think you can get a website <laughs> address onto the screen. <laughs> yeah. And what a fist fight it would be. All right. Thanks everybody for coming and uh, like, subscribe, follow, and we'll talk to y'all next time. See you guys.